Hello. Now, let's talk about solving this problem where we're going to launch a projectile at a castle and see if we hit the castle. So, I'm also going to show you something with Desmos. That if you understand really what's going on, Desmos does the math for you without you having to punch things in the calculator. You just got to put in the right equation. And that's all. And it solves the equation for you. So it kind of gets rid of the algebra. Also show you a second thing. Do we actually hit the wall? So we have this 50 meters per second, 30 degrees, 215 meters away, 10 meter tall. This last thing's a new thing. We'll get to that at the end. So 50 meters per second, 30 degrees. Well, the first thing we always did was, you know, 50 sine 30. Look, came up with a number, and that number is negative 49, which that can't happen. Oh, because it's not in degrees, so change it to degrees. Okay, now we're good. 50 sine 30 is 25. 50 cosine 30 is 43. Okay, that's nice of it to solve for me. Now, the first thing we always did was, well, let's find out how long this thing flies for. And that was using the vertical the sine, the 25, and we put into the equation VF, you know, V equals V um, minus, you know, 9.8 uh, T, that kind of thing. All right, so we can't do that. We actually have to put in numbers. So again, VF at the top is zero. Our initial V is 25, and Desmos doesn't like T. Desmos wants X because it's going to find X. X. So there we go. Our time for this equation is 2.551. Now remember, that's only half time. Okay. So we need to find the total time also, um, which would be doubling that. So I'm just going to create a variable called z. Uh, z equals 2 times. And unfortunately, it won't let me actually put in x here. Um, so I'm just going to have to put in the 2.551. 2 times 2.5551. Awesome. All right. So now what did we do with those? Well, we have the half time here. and We have the total time here. We have our vertical velocity that we use to find the half time. And now we have horizontal velocity. Well, we've got to use the horizontal velocity, and we basically did d equals v times t, right? Um, because, you know, d equals di plus vit plus 1 fat squared. Horizontally, we start at zero and our acceleration zero. Okay. So we do this. Now our velocity is um, cosine, so it's for the 43. So, again, we don't want to round yet, so we're going to... Put that in, and we're going to multiply it by z. That's what's nice. So I made a variable z, and I can just use it here. So our cannonball goes 220.92 meters. Well, our castle's 215 meters away. So we get there, but do we actually hit the wall? Do we go over the wall kind of thing? So it's a 10-meter tall wall. Okay, this is the the final new step. Well, we want to know how high this thing is. So again, we have an equation D equals you know, DI plus VIT uh, plus one half AT squared. And the one half of negative 9.8 is that. You know, T squared. Squared. Right? Something like that. Okay. Well, again, it doesn't like T's. We've got to put in X's. And X, our V is 25, and we get this nice graph, the blue thing. Awesome. So D equals, oh, let's change it from D. Let's call it height. H for height. Okay. So here is our thing. I don't need this up. Um, we just found the equation for height. And interestingly enough, this half time thing right here, it goes right through the middle. So the, the total height is at 2.551. Wow, that was our half time. And total height is 31.88.
Okay, well, that's one of the, you know, the, the answers we try to find. So that's good to know that. Now, here is this final new thing. We don't really care so much about how high it goes in our problem because we don't have anything in the middle here. We do care, though, that it, it, it's like hitting the wall at 215. Again, it goes 220, but we need it to hit the wall at 215, and that wall is 10 meters tall. So we got to know if it actually hits the wall or like goes over the wall. So here's the new step. We need to know how long it takes to hit the wall. Well, it's a wall is uh, at 215. I forgot already. The wall's at 215, and it's going 43. Uh, and again x so d equals vt we're just doing d equals vt again like number five here just d equals vt again but now we know the d we know it's at 215 and it's going 43 we need to know what time it takes to get to get there so that's what this green line is it just popped up here so it is going to take whatever that's uh 4.965 seconds 4.965 seconds to get there now here's the nice thing about this graph. There's an intersection here between the height and this time. And this dot right here is telling me, that's the intersection, that that 4.965 seconds, it's 3.3 meters high. Because the blue graph is the height for the whole flight. So it's telling me that it's three meters tall. It's three meters up when it hits the wall. So that would be, it actually hits the wall because the wall is 10 meters high. So that was the new thing. So let me run this back over again. So we start by just doing 50 sine theta, 50 cosine theta. We use our sine, our vertical stuff, to find the time. And that was the purple line. Found out that the time for half time, where velocity finals zero at the top, is 2.551. We doubled that for total time. We used our distance equation horizontally with our total time. Found that it goes 220 meters. Awesome. So we know we have a chance of hitting the wall because the wall is at 215. Then we came back and we put in a height equation. Again, our distance equation vertically. And it's going up at 25 meters per second at the beginning, but it's got a negative 9.8, so that's one half of 9.8. And it gave us this nice blue graph. From that, we found that, well, the maximum height is 31.8888 meters right at right at the half time okay awesome but now we actually need to know well what time is it going to get to the wall because we know it actually ends up beyond the wall a little bit what time does it get to 215 so that's why i put 215 into a dis just use this distance equation but put 215 in it put our velocity in it and said well what time will we hit the wall that's this green line and found out that it will hit the wall at 4.965 seconds. And since I have two graphs here, I have a height graph and a time graph, there's an intersection that says that 4.965 seconds, it's 3.3 .3 meters high. Which means, yes, we actually do blow the wall apart. Ta-da!